That attic is creepy. K2 hit. Big time. You try to scare us? Dude, that was a lot of footsteps. Wow, plain as day, 15 to 20 footsteps below us. Nurse, we need a nurse. There's energy in that hallway. What I consider to be like a group home. Servicing any type of a mental disorder you can imagine, everything from people with Down syndrome, uh, alcoholics, murderers were even housed here. I mean, just very run of the mill, day to day things that we see all the time. Susie, come out, come out wherever you are. The morning after the squirrel cage investigation, the team briefs on potential evidence caught at the historic jail the night before. Then it's on to a day of team building and some good times. There, I gotta see you now. That's it. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> is studying the architecture of this beautiful historic location. Right. Oh, you're applying for a job? Gamble. After the ultra-speedy valet guy retrieved the vehicle, it was time to load all equipment, sleeping bags, and everything else needed for our overnight investigation later in the afternoon. After a quick lunch, the team took a short tour and researched potential prospects in downtown Omaha. Whenever we travel out of state for an investigation, we always look for locations to bring us back in the future. The Council Bluffs Omaha region has many locations reported to have paranormal activity. John's excited. He barely contained himself. And, and Scott, you need to get out and let some of that energy out. John's excited. What did you just get, Scott? I got a <laughs> new grill. Show your excitement. I knocked my teeth. <laughs> Investigator and co founder Scott Stoltz could barely contain himself after winning a new grill, a gas grill, in Omaha. Meanwhile, the team mile by mile, was getting closer to Malvern, Iowa, the site of the overnight investigation. Malvern Manor has a storied past, both good and bad. It was built in 1885 as the town's first hotel, the Cottage Hotel, and over the years, the building became a convalescent home and a minimum care facility. One of the original gentlemen was this guy right here. Uh, this is who we affectionately refer to as the captain. Uh, yep. Captain Colors. Coincidentally, he was also like one of the first people to really come to this town and, and settle and build a life here and a, build a family and really put down some roots here. Now, most people are running into this gentleman up on the second floor. I'm, I'm pretty confident in saying that he's not too cool with what we're doing here. I will say that. So in the 1950s, this place took a hardcore turn and it became what we would consider more like a nursing home. Mm -hmm. So that weird section of building outside, it looks like it just doesn't belong at all. Right. Like, yeah. They put that on in 1956 to kind of accommodate for this nursing home setting. So there's back there, um, there's a lot of wider door frames, a lot of laminate type flooring, mm -hmm. kind of suggesting a more medical type atmosphere, sure. especially in the rooms themselves. Now we know that the nursing home didn't last very long. 
uh, because in the 1970s, the state of Iowa came in and they said, oh, your hallways aren't wide enough to, to support transporting beds and mm -hmm. properly, things of that nature. And that's where it becomes um, what I consider to be like a group home. So servicing any type of a mental disorder you can imagine, everything from people with Down syndrome, uh, alcoholics, I mean, just very run-of-the-mill, day-to-day things that we see all the time. Uh, it's a very, very exotic case of, you know, like multiple personalities, schizophrenics, uh, murderers, we're even housed here. Like, this is a very odd population of people. So was the nursing home, did they use this part they did. as well? Okay. They did. The okay. people that were able, um, they would, even some of them were upstairs. Okay. So they weren't were just secluded out there, they were here as well. Correct. So okay. I, mean, I think the people that were back there, um, Definitely needed a little more TLC. Yeah, you know, uh, maybe. Yep, and probably um, a lot of meds, right? Yeah. Things of that. This is one of the more interesting rooms. This is what we call Gracie's room. Um, now, Gracie was one of those exotic cases. So she was um, multiple personality. Uh, she was also schizophrenic. On top of all of that, so she had a lot going on, and probably what could only be described a very chaotic type of mind state. Many, many times, the nurse's station was just sits a few feet away from us now in that nursing home wing, that new addition over there. Um, they would hear male voices coming from Gracie's room. For pretty obvious reason, they had to check that out. So they would open the door, but they would find it was only her. Um, but she could, you know, manipulate her voice to make it sound male. They came in, there was a group of three nurses came and sat with Gracie for just a single hour. In that hour, documented 13 separate personalities with I mean, different names the whole the whole night um medically speaking like that's almost unheard of this is where that nurse's station sat and i always ripped it out still have some names here obviously on the on the med cabinets down at the end of this hallway mm -hmm. on the right hand side is room number two um this giant uh, shadow figure is coming out of room two, turning, and then charging at people. Now when I say like running or charging at people, it, we're talking less than a second of travel time. Like it is moving that fast. The majority of these rooms then uh, were uh, utilized for the group home. The reasons why this place was ultimately shut down in 20 or 2005, it's a laundry list. I mean, it's mm -hmm. very long, but abuse, neglect. You see these pipes running, you know, mm -hmm. through the middle of these rooms. You hope and pray these people weren't suicidal. But these was more or less a band-aid, you know, to, to come up to code right. um, for the That's building. So now this right here, this is where people are experiencing uh, this gentleman spirit referring to himself as the captain okay. the most. Um, Usually they're greeted with an EVP or a disembodied voice. Um, some people have even been getting punched, um, like in the arms or in the legs. We were nice or lucky enough to have some of that former nursing staff walk us through the building, kind of tell us what they remembered about these specific patients. And it was really cool because they were giving, you know, personality and, and really cool stories about these you know, resident spirits that we are experiencing. Mm -hmm. This is what we call Susie's room. Now, Susie was a middle-aged patient. Mentally, though, she was probably closer to the age of around eight. Uh, so we found a lot of these coloring books and activity books. She likes the human interaction, um, especially when people are coloring her books or leaving notes, which we openly invite people to do all the time. Uh, she likes to manipulate the pages at times uh, in the books. What's interesting about her is the activity seems to be contained to the room. For whatever reason that may be, uh, many of the other spirits here are fairly transient, will follow you kind of throughout the building and probably mess with you all night long. Um, with her, she stays put and we're not quite sure why that would be. The color of the, of the paint here is definitely one of the more cheery rooms. Maybe that has something to do with it, I don't know. This is my favorite room of the whole place. This is what we call Inez's room. Um, the story of Inez is probably one of the more tragic 
that we have here associated with the property. I'm sure you guys have heard that story, mm -hmm. right? He's 12 years old. We found out a few new bits of information um, regarding the whole story. So we know that her younger brother Otto came up and found her, tried to get her down and couldn't, ran to the grocery store. He grabbed um, biological aunt and uncle, which was soon to become adopted mom and dad. Sheer dumb luck grabs two doctors. They all come back here, all five of them. They get her down, they try to resuscitate her, they can't, too much time had passed. Um, this kind of shocked the community, obviously, and one of those doctors, this must have really shook him as well, because not even 30 days later that one of those doctors committed suicide. Now that doll in the red dress, it has a wind-up mechanism in the back of it. Um, and when she does play, it's like a music box, it plays We Wish You a Merry Christmas, I believe is the tune, but she also sways. Uh, back and forth with that music. There we are, guys. Where are we at, guys? Malvern Manor. Josh just left. We have this place for until noon tomorrow. It is 5 p.m. So we have 11 hours, guys. Or no, 13 hours. We got a lot of hours. We have. Uh, look at that. Would you look at that? Just look at that. Technically, we could. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this team. We thank you for safe travels here to Iowa. Please guide, protect, and watch over us tonight as we investigate this old historic location. Keep us safe from things seen and things not seen. We ask for your, your guidance, your love, and protection tonight, and also on our journey home tomorrow morning. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 Steve, Kevin, oh, geez. coming upstairs. Good. Ready to add it. Ooh, what was that? That was a nice, deep, low sound. 8.39 p.m. It was a very low voice. Can you do that again for us? It wasn't a growl, but it was like a mm, That's how I would describe it. Okay. You just be quiet and mm -hmm. we just listen. I'm going to sit. I'm going to turn on my flashlight. Okay.
Who growled when we first came up here? I was standing over here by the crawl space, and Steve was working with his camera, and I heard a nice low voice. Can you do that again? Let's introduce ourselves. My name is Steve, the lead investigator of Old School Paranormal. We're out of Hayes, Kansas. And I'm Kevin, uh, another investigator and technology manager, which probably is a little new to some of you, but you've probably seen a lot of the gadgets from other teams. And those will help us determine if there's a presence with us. These instruments are not going to hurt you. And I do want to tell you that we come in peace. We come in respect. We're not here to harm you. We're not here to scare you. What we ask in return is res mutual respect. We ask that you do not harm us. Harm us. You know, we've heard that you, whoever's up here, likes their alcohol, particularly Jack Daniels. Well, we don't have any alcohol. Well, we have some alcohol. But I tell you what, I would be willing, we would be willing to make a deal with you. If you give us a sign of your presence, knock on a wall, light off one of those devices on the floor, stomp on the floor, whatever. I'm Scott, and that's John. We're from Hayes, Kansas. And we're here to visit with you, Gracie. You and only you in this room. If you're in here, can you signal to us? Make a noise, touch one of these lights here. Push me out of your chair, it's okay. We'd really like to talk to you and to hear what you have to say. While we feel that orbs are almost always dust or insects, the orb you're about to see has an unusual glow to it when it starts from the floor and goes by John who is standing in the doorway to the room. Gracie, are you here? Or is there, should I say, which Gracie is here? Or is there another name that you went by when you changed into somebody else? If your name's not Gracie, what is your name? Does it bother you that I'm sitting in your wheelchair? What do we know about Gracie? We know that Gracie had a lot of um, different personalities. 13. 13. At least 13. There were some nurses that used to work with her that came in for an hour or so, sat down with her, and during that time there are 13 different personalities. And she could change her voice. Can't yes. even a man sound like a man. Yes. Gracie, did you, did you enjoy the nurses that were here? Did you enjoy their company? What was the name, <clears throat> excuse me, what was the name of your favorite nurse? What was the name of your least favorite nurse? Meanwhile, back in the attic, Steve and Kevin are finalizing a K2 sweep of the area to establish a baseline for EMF. So far, I'm not getting any K2 hits. Nope. So that would, if it does go off, I would confirm it as a positive. Yeah, we're at flat line K2 yeah. hits right now with EMF. I have nothing on this wall over here. Okay. So, 
I'm just gonna put this right here. I don't know if our camera's gonna see it or not, but that's okay. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. There's some cigarettes over here too. Why are you hanging out in the attic of an old nursing home and psychiatric hospital? Why are you here? It's okay to communicate. You just can't touch us. It's either a laugh, like right next to you, or a dog. No, I mean, it sounded like it came out that way. I did not hear it. Just yeah, 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 yeah. let's see if we can hear it again. Is somebody laughing? Uh, let's grab you some good stuff. How oh, about? Fireball. You probably like that since it's whiskey. Yep, cinnamon whiskey. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to set it right here next to this device. This is called a rim pod. It's a proximity device, which means you don't have to touch it. See, so watch. Look, I didn't... Okay, that's all you have to do. Okay, so... You like your whiskey? Probably like cheap cigarettes and cheap whiskey, didn't you? This is your place you came up and drank and smoked. Good beat. Yep, we did. Can you do that again? You just made a beat. I was talking about Cheap whiskey, cheap cigarettes. You like your cheap cigarettes, huh? You like cheap women? See, I'm getting the typical, okay, I have energy going through me. Okay. It's okay you're here. It's perfectly fine, but you can't touch us. I need you to do me a favor. If you are Gracie that's up here, I need you to make the noise louder. Can you do that for me? Okay. If you're not Gracie, but you know Gracie, I need you to make that noise louder. Get closer to the antenna. I don't know, dude. What do you think? I think we should move on for a little bit. Let's move on. I mean, we can. I'll just come back. Yeah. The other team will be here, I'm sure. Yep. Since you don't want to talk to us. Yeah, we'll be back. Don't worry. We will be back. Did you like it here? This was your room. Did you like it in this room? Did you have a lot of friends and family that came to visit you, Gracie? you enjoyed the most? Okay, Hank. Here's what's going on, my man. Can I look in your dresser drawer? Hmm? 
One of the more interesting rooms in Malvern Manor is that of Hank or Henry. Previous investigators to the manor found that messing with his clothes in the dresser drawers or putting on his pajamas will cause a ruckus. It's also noted that Hank particularly hates women, especially when they mess with his belongings. These look like old grandpa type of shorts. Yeah. Now, Hank, oh, there's your bottoms. Boy, you're a big boy, weren't you, Hank? A little uh, extra musclage there for the ladies, huh? Yeah, look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna put these nice and primp in your dresser drawer. There you go. And I expect you to keep them that way, Hank. Okay? Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. So, Hank, we heard that some women come and wear your clothes. I bet you don't like that, do you? What do you tell them? Do you get angry? Well, Hank, let me ask you this. How did you put up with the female nurses? I had to take care of you. Were you angry at the nurses? Or did you like the nurses and flirt with them? Hank, were you ever married? So Hank, we heard that some women come and wear your clothes. I bet you don't like this. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, I heard that. Completely. So Hank, we heard that some women come and wear your clothes. I bet you don't like that, do you? There's a voice back there. No. What do you tell them? There is. Well, it's not like a female, though. When enhanced, there is a quick voice that appears to say the word true to Kevin's statement about some women wearing Hank's clothes. So Hank, we heard that some women come and wear your clothes. I bet you don't like that, do you? There's something there, there's a voice there. As a person who allegedly hated women, and especially those who appear to mock him by wearing his clothes, the response of true fits right in on this narrative. Inez, we know you died tragically, took your own life. I'm sorry to hear that at, what was it, 12 years old, you felt you had to do that. What made you feel to do that, though? It's kind of, I think it's kind of weird how all of a sudden you decided to do that. Was it? Something, like something inside this building. Or maybe it was someone. Is it okay we're in your room? If it's okay, can you touch one of these devices? If it's not okay, touch one of the devices. We're not here to try to make you feel uncomfortable by any means. Okay, we'll even play with you, okay? You just need to tell us what, what you wanna do. 
You want to play hide and go seek? You don't have to even just touch things. You can talk to us also. Is your brother's name Otto? put the doll back up. We can do that. Does that make you happy? You could also close the door if you'd like. Can you close the door? You can talk to us. Maybe you don't want to talk to us. Do you not like us in your room? Would you like us to go visit Susie? Is that okay if we go talk to Susie? I think she wants to play. If not, if she doesn't want to play, I hope she wants to color her coloring book. Oh, yeah, coloring books. Do you like coloring books? Well, we'll just go, we'll come back, but you can play with the doll, okay? Why are you in this attic? scratching people? You're frustrated that they're up here? Frustrated that you're up here? And tag it. Tap on the wall over here, Bonnie. Can you do that again? twice then we'll know it's you and not the settling of the building don't be afraid we're not here to harm you or make you leave or anything like that we're just trying to figure out who you are Susie, you want to color with me? I used to color with my daughter when she was young. Isn't that cool? What do you think? You like that? If you would like to color something different, just use that uh, purple crayon and start coloring somewhere else. Yeah, or you can even open a different coloring book or flip the page. Susie, do you want to play hide and go seek? You want to do that? If you want to do that, you have to let us know. Otherwise, we don't know how that, that you want to play. You maybe you could shut your door if you want. You can knock twice on the wall, or get close to the green lights on your bed. God, that sounds like fun, doesn't it? We'd be like, Susie, come out, come out wherever you are. With our cameras and audio recorders still rolling in the attic, strange noises were picked up, indicating something or someone was moving. This wouldn't be the first time this noise was heard and would be one of the focal points of our investigation later in the evening.
Inez, if that's you, please step away. Please step away from the light. It might be fun, but I thank you. No. No, no. <laughs> I want to know who's with me in this room. So Inez, are you in here with me? Or maybe Otto? Susie? Is that you? My understanding is, though, that, Susie, you don't like to leave your room. So if it's you, I'd be surprised. Inez, what, what makes a girl of 12 years of age decide to kill themselves? Huh? I know I asked you that before. I'm hopeful that you've given me an answer. Time to shift our focus to the former nursing home hallway. The largest claim here is that of the Shadow Man, also known as Johnny, who has been known to bum rush people, all six foot seven of him. This giant uh, shadow figure is coming out of room two, turning and then charging at people. Anybody down here? Time to go get your medication. Come on. Now's the time to communicate. Not scared of you. Give me a sign. Let me know you're here. So what's the name of the big dude down here? Seems to bum rush people. It's freaking creepy in here. Come on, tell me your name. You're the one that chases the nurses into the kitchen, so scared. And now, you're bum rushing people here in this hallway. You might scare them, but you're not scaring me. hearing noises coming out of this room right next to me. My name is Steve. And I do come here in respect. Don't mean you any harm. But I want to find out who's here. I want to find out why you're here. How come you're not bum rushing me? Come on.
captain is a little is it okay if I spend a little time in here? Neil coming in. I'm gonna move this stuff off the bed. I'll leave this on the bed. That was Neil. I'm sure this wasn't gonna lay down and relax a little bit. Is that okay with you? After 15 minutes of complete silence in the captain's room, Neil decided to take the opportunity and get some much needed rest. Doing an all-night investigation does require the team to take breaks throughout the night to help keep our batteries charged. However, Neil's nap would not last long. Fifteen minutes after laying down, he is suddenly awoken. <laughs> 